Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above. We're here on our gameplay segment for the physical attack phase. Uh, we talked about some of the cool stuff mechs can do. They can punch, they can kick, they can death from above, trademark copyright, just kidding. Uh, they can charge, they can rip trees out of the ground and club them over each other's heads. Uh, so all sorts of neat things they can do. Today we're going to focus on a couple of the basics, punching and kicking. So our Zeus here is squaring off against this poor panther, uh, and we'll do a, a couple of examples here of, of punches and kicks. Now, start with punching. The first thing about punching is, if you shot with a weapon mounted in that arm, you simply can't punch with it. Uh, it has to be an arm that did not already fire a weapon this turn. Um, and so, if you have a free arm, so let's assume our Zeus fired the PPC but did not fire the missile launcher on that right arm. Let's say it's going to punch with that right arm. What would happen? Well, Basically, it's the same thing as Gator, right? Um, so if you remember in the shooting phase, we went through this whole notion of, you know, gunnery, attacker mod, target mod, other mods, range, except when you're making physical attacks, you use your piloting skill, not your gunnery skill. So let's assume this Zeus has a piloting skill of three. That's pretty good. Um, and so he's going to punch this Panther. We would add three for his piloting. We have his attacker mod. Remember, we used the yellow die for that. It's a one. He walked this turn. So now we're at a total of four, and then we add the green die on the panther here, that's the targeting mod, that's a two, we're at a total of six. <clears throat> so there are some other modifiers that come into play. Uh, the first one is if you have damaged actuators. So if you have damaged upper and lower actuators, that makes it harder to hit. It also, those two specifically impact your damage. If your shoulder's frozen or destroyed, you just can't punch it all with the arm. If you're missing a hand actuator, that impacts your ability to hit, but not your damage. So in this case, the Zeus does have a missing hand actuator. It's got this giant uh, missile barrel there. And so uh, factoring out any other special rules, there are quirks um, you know, that the mechs have, and the Zeus is a particular one where you know, it actually does not suffer this penalty, but we're going to forget about that for a minute and just assume that it's going to take that plus one penalty for no hand actuator. So again, going over our, our target number, we have three for piloting, one for the attacker mod, two for the target mod, and then one for missing a hand actuator. That gets us a total of seven. So if I roll a seven or better, I successfully punch, and I got a 10, right? So that would be a hit. So the Zeus would have successfully punched the Panther in this scenario. And the next thing that happens is damage. Now remember, you can punch with both of your arms. Uh, in this scenario, we just punched with one, but you can punch with both for each arm the mech does its tonnage divided by 10. So in this case, the Zeus is 80 tons. It does 8 damage. The great thing about this is that it does not get grouped or anything like that. It is just one giant damage grouping, so a solid 8 points of damage to a single location. Speaking of location, it's a little different when you punch. You roll a d6, and that's it. There's a different lo location table you look up for punching. A four is right torso, and uh, and so, you know, that, that's where they hit. Now, they only hit upper body when they punch. This is important. Why is it important? Well, if you roll a six, that's a head hit. So when you're punching, you have a one in six chance of cracking somebody in the skull. That's compared to a one in 36 chance when you're shooting them. So it's substantially more likely that you are going to hit someone in the head with a punch than with... Uh, you know, a shot from range. Now, um, if you're a 60-ton mech and you get lucky, you can knock out somebody's head in, in a single physical attack round. So punches can be very devastating. Don't underestimate them. They're, they're an incredible thing to do. Um, and the other great thing about punching is, you know, you as the attacker don't take any damage. Um, some physical attacks, like a charge, you'll take a little bit of a hit as well. Punching and kicking, you do not. You just straight up hurt, uh, deal out the hurt there. So, um, punching is a great thing to do. So a couple things on punching before we move on to kicking. The first thing is, when you punch, uh, your arm can punch out of the front arc or out of the side arc that it's on. So in this case, the Zeus could punch you know, out of its front arc here, uh, but also out of its side arc. So for example, let me move these dice out of the way. If my Zeus here was here, okay, I could still punch that panther uh, no problem with that right arm because that panther is in fact uh, in the right arm arc. However, if my Zeus was like this, 
right in the Panthers, right in the rear arc of the Zeus. Well, I, I unfortunately could not reach around and hit that Panther, except, don't forget this, guys, this is important. Except if you torso twisted in the appropriate direction in the shooting phase. So remember, at the beginning of the shooting phase, the first thing you do is declare your shots. You can torso twist. You can turn your torso one hex facing in any direction, right? From forward. So obviously the default position for the Zeus is this. So what I can do is I can actually, this mech is magnetized, so it's a good for good for the example. I can torso twist 60 degrees to one side. And so now my Zeus is looking like this. So the front arc here, get the camera up and over, the front arc is now here, which means the Panther would be in fact in the side arc. So there's a little bit of tactics, a little bit of strategy there. Uh, when you are in the shooting phase, it's a good thing to be thinking about. You know, if you torso twist, you can still whack somebody. You know, if they want to get up close and personal behind you, you know, you can still turn around and, and crack them right in the head um, if you torso twist uh, and you can get one of your arms in play there. We're back to talk about kicking. So we've reset our max here. The most important thing about kicking is you do have to be in the front arc, no exceptions. You can't torso twist and, you know, wheelhouse kick somebody behind you. Uh, mechs, unfortunately, do not have that level of agility. Uh, so they do need to be in the front arc, as you can see they are here. So when you kick, uh, it's the same process as punching. You take the piloting skill. Again, for our Zeus, we said it was a three. You add the attacker mod, which is the yellow dice, the target mod, which is the green dice of the one you're kicking. Uh, there are specific penalties for uh, hip, upper leg, lower leg, foot actuator damages, and all those are, are in the uh, in the book there. Um, but if you um, if we want to assume that these mechs are not damaged, our target number so far would be a six. However, kicking also affords a minus two bonus. Remember, negatives negatives a good thing. So it takes that six down to a four. So I would only need a four to hit the panther. I pick up two d six. I roll it movie magic. Look at that, I hit. So when you hit with a kick, a couple things happen. Uh, one, your target needs to make a piloting skill roll because they just got kicked. The second thing that happens is you figure out how much damage you do. So it is, you can, you can only kick with one leg, by the way. You can punch with both arms. You can only ever kick with one leg. You can't kick with a leg that you, uh, if you fired weapons uh, that were mounted on that leg, which again is a rare thing. A couple of mechs, like a wasp, for example, has an SRM2 on its leg. Um, most mechs don't. So you can only kick with one leg, and, and, and that is your tonnage divided by five damage. So Zeus is 80 tons, does 16 points of damage on the kick, and that goes to a single location, which is, which is brutal, right? So imagine uh, taking 16 damage. That's, you know, it's almost an autocannon 20 getting pumped into your leg. And much like the punch table, this has a unique hit location table. And uh, we would look in the front arc and we would see that um, a one to three is a, is a right leg, four to six is left leg. So in this case, uh, it's, it's square in the right leg and that right leg takes full 16 points of damage on the Panther. Now, if the Zeus did happen to miss and we, you know, we stuck with our original hit roll of a three, uh, then the Zeus would need to make a piloting skill roll. So the Panther would take no damage, but the Zeus like whiffs, you can imagine, whoosh, and the legs go out from underneath of it. So hopefully the pilot makes the roll, otherwise they're gonna look like a jerk and fall down and everyone else will laugh at them. Um, but in this case, uh, we're gonna pretend that the Zeus hits and so we don't have to worry about that. Now, when mechs, um, again, uh, the, to recap piloting, when mechs have to make a piloting skill roll, a couple things happen. One, you roll 2d6, you have to meet or beat your piloting skill plus any modifiers. Um, the second thing that happens is if you fail, there's like a whole series of events. First, you have to recheck your piloting skill to see if the mech warrior takes damage. If you fail, the mech warrior takes damage. We'll talk about that in the end phase. If you, um, if you succeed, the mech warrior doesn't take damage. Mech still falls down. You roll d6 to determine which direction the mech has fallen. Uh, and then after that, you mark the mech's location. You place the mech facing uh, in the facing that it landed. You roll for damage. Again, it's tonnage divided by 10, grouped into clusters of five points. And then, um, and then that's it. And then the mech will flip over on its belly, uh, still prone, facing the direction. 
So a couple other things on punching and kicking. If there is a level differential between two mechs, so let's say uh, my Clint is here on the edge of the hill and the Jenner is, is right at the, at the level below it, right? Um, here, this might be more, more visually understandable here. We move them onto the building. So what happens if my Clint wants to, uh, to kick this Jenner? Um, well, if it tries to kick it, you're going to roll on the punch location table because you're obviously only hitting the upper part of the mech. But if the Clint wants to punch him, he's out of luck, so he's just going to whiff. Um, conversely, if the Jenner wanted to punch the Clint, we would laugh because of its tiny little arms. But if it did hit um, with, its, uh, with a punch attack, it would hit the Clint in the, in the uh, leg hit location table because, again, it can't reach up high enough to hit him in the body. So if there's a level differential, um, you have to roll on different hit location tables, but otherwise uh, it's all the same uh, type of thing there going on. Okay, so that is punching and kicking in a nutshell. Um, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it enhances your gameplay. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks again for watching.